Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saigon and today we're continuing our Royal Rumble campaign where we're trying to survive as long as possible in the unfair, uh, unfairly modded campaign. Legendary Iron Man, Double Enemy, Squad Size, Yellow Alert and just every single enemy in the book that uh, makes our life miserable. And this is a great example of a mission where I think uh, we bit off a little bit more than we can chew. So it's uh, Sabotage the Transmitter mission. Super fast paced. We need to get to it. And there are only 35 enemies. So kind of a moderate size of, of uh, enemies, mind you, that excludes reinforcements and such. We have Shore Force, uh, which is a phenomenal side trap. Uh, just offering larger enemy packs. And since we are doubling those packs, it's actually Shore Force times two. The hunt for some extra psionic um, teams there and then of course what would this campaign be without an additional faction cults of jiraiya a new faction uh, sounds like a psionic type of faction um, not sure but it gives the vibe of uh, psionic factions we got a nice team our b team goes in uh, this time Shadow uh, will help them uh, in order to make sure that we reach the transmitter in time. Implacable, the man who did quite a few missions well and led them, uh, will be in here as well. Ataxia, his partner in crime, with that nice uh, mobile turret. I built the second one, so this, uh, even if we lose all of this equipment, our prime team will still have equipment. Inappropriate Murphy, with a nice uh, gun. Uh, moderate, uh, moderately good in uh, his aim, so I think it's an average scope on here. Uh, put some uh, nice fire rounds on top uh, because we do have quite a few non-robotic enemies. Zirkem, uh, who is going to bring the pain, double shot and uh, blue screen rounds. Some extra armor with a biotech vest to tank. And Endors with another turret. So you can see I go double turret. Uh, this is a mobile one. This is an immobile one. And the reason why I, want, uh, why I want to do this is we do have a limited amount of time. And the way that I foresee the mission going in my head is we're going to arrive. We're going to trigger a pack. This is going to be an absolute sh show uh, where we are just trying to survive and there will be a huge firefight and i am hoping that the turrets will give us that manpower advantage that we need in order to somehow survive it wish me luck guys this is definitely going to be a banger good and we are landing i am looking forward for this mission i'm quite excited actually guys because uh lately this campaign is turning around for the uh, for the better at the very beginning, I was skeptical that we could even get rid of some of uh, the um, some of the chosens. But nowadays, we have kicked all three out um, out of the ring, and we're ready to hopefully achieve a bit more. No double agent for us, but we will be fine with our extra firepower that we brought. So, let's take a look. We need to go all the way to here. Six turns, not a lot. But luckily, our uh, our Reaper will do the trick by simply scouting out for us. The invaders send a patrol. Holy moly! Well, it already starts being an interesting setup here. Yeah, these Archon Sentinels are going to be a problem. Luckily for us. Shadow is staying in the, you guessed it, shadows. So, see, let's force the strengths here right away, just to go through the pack dynamic. Mutant Commander, I would suggest, uh, is the leader of the pack. Could, or, yeah, potentially Mutant Commander is the leader of the pack. Now, typically, uh, you would have him together with uh, two units. In a normal setup, in a normal mod, a mutant commander doesn't even exist, but a unit of his strength would come with two advents. Show, uh, show of force makes it three advents. The way that we scrambled uh, the pods so that it can pick from any enemy type makes it not only uh, commander plus three advents, but commander plus three anything. Uh, that is why Archon Sentinels can even be a follower Typically, you don't see such a pack uh, or a specter. Well, and now the point is, 
uh, the extra size doubles this pack. So we have packs of eight, which is ludicrous. That's so many hit points to chew through. I hope that we, I sincerely hope that we can make that work. Um, Enders moves up as well. Game is lagging a little bit. Let me fix it. Okay, hopefully it's better. I closed a couple of background applications. So here we go. Let's move attacks here. I want to move in fast and relatively furious. An appropriate Murphy moves up as well. And then finally Zirkim. I want to, of course, take the high ground here with uh, standing on that rooftop when we're engaging the pack. And simply make this here our first like shootout. If there are cards right, we might be able to put a turret down here. Um, no, we, we need to double check where the packs are. Maybe with yellow alert they will all just get into this room here anyways. Um, I think the reason why the map has such a problem is just the Im immense size of enemies. Number of enemies, that is. 35 is a lot for the x convention to go through. And look at this pack here. This is easily 200 hit points if you include the armor. Well, that's, uh, that's nasty. 150 hit points maybe, but still. Even better if we were to flop a grenade into them. Perfect here would be uh, one of those modded uh, freezing grenades uh, that, that have a larger uh, radius and then you just lob them in. You basically freeze all of uh, them at the same time and then just go to town. But we don't have such a thing, plus the fr uh, freezing grenade is a one-off uh, item. The B team is uh, not going to use it because I don't want to uh, lose that item. We need to deal with what we have. Now, cultist activity means that's the third player. And apparently they weren't, uh, mm, they weren't even active. Well. So we can, we could, theoretically speaking, hit all of these guys. I think that's a good idea. I won't have a perfect engage anyways. So do we have salvo? Yes, we do. Problem is, not close enough, so actually need to find a way to get Sirkim into a better position. Moving into a flanking position. And the reason why I want to engage immediately is we don't have the chance to get to high ground yet. And we won't get a better shot at them. So that's double explosion. Which should definitely deal with a lot of uh, their armor. Oh, wow. Well, that's the good old 60, 70 hit points uh, damage in one go. Definitely a good start. Whilst we're at it, uh, we still have 12 hit points left on these guys. Could have uh, combined it, by the way, with the kill zone for some extra fun. Lightning hands on that sentinel to get rid of its covering fire. Like that. Advanced team working over because we need extra damage and Zirkim is just the person to lay down that extra hammer. Uh, that sentinel should be fine, would we? 
would be able to kill it in one go, but he most certainly would be able to kill it with a chain shot. So here we go. Nice hit. Good job. Come on. There we go. Delicious. The Elite Purifier is a bit of a problem because uh, if it explodes, Shadow can could fall down, and we don't want that to happen, of course. Implacable. It's a nice little position here. Move to here. That might trigger another pack. I tell you what. We're going to do what every sane person would do and charge even further forward. With a bit of movement magic, we very much would be able to see what is behind that wall. Shall I leave it out? Uh, leave uh, them outside in the open. Potentially not the best idea. I think we're going here for now. I got what I needed. Just double checking what we're dealing with. See, and that's why you always check. You want to make sure that you're not running into the hellhole. No, they wouldn't be able to see any of us here, which is good. That's exactly what I was hoping would happen. Run gun with implacable. Moving up. I said a shotgun to the face. Okay, and now we can move on a bit further. Let's see. Impeccable can get another advanced teamwork. Whom can we hit? We could kill the Purifier or the Assassin. Not bad. Uh, let's hand over the teamwork. I'm just trying to clean this pack up as well as we can. Ataxia hits and kills the Purifier. See, and that's exactly why we moved forward, because we didn't want that to happen. Inappropriate Murphy moves up very inappropriately. untouchable which means we can stand in the open for that one shot from the specter that's fine what I don't like is if the specter would move in a straight line he would discover he would discover our Reaper. That wasn't fully thought through. But maybe he is just going to disappear. Maybe it's just taking a shot, which is also fine. Maybe it's just doing some random stuff. Okay, so far we're good. Uh, we need to move forward. There are plenty of other packs around. Still haven't found kind of the cult of Jiraiya or whatever it was called. But we have uh, eliminated the first pack of eight. 
Granted, we've used a bit of a double explosion strategy. But that double whammy worked out very well. And there is there are the reinforcements. They have heard the double whammy. And will now try to give us a hard time. I think if we keep our kind of core base here, we should be good to go. Few things. I could try to like move up here. We know the pack is right there. We move over here. Gives us also decent aiming angles. I think this here is even better. High ground, very helpful for us. Inappropriate Murphy. Can someone explain to me why exactly he can't move from here? Like, what is happening? Let me try to fix that. All right, I ended up needing to actually console comment him to here. Uh, this seems to be bugged. You cannot move out of that space. Never had that problem either. That's an interesting bug, by the way. So I'm wondering, high ground would be great. But we also want to kill that Spectre. So let's move up. Trying to move everyone into position first. By the way, here we also yeah, would need to have a position down here with Zirkum. Let's start with that. We can already see that there is a pack further down the line. All right, the taxia. Moves all the way up there. I think sensible idea. Could have placed the turret. Implacable moves more to the front line without triggering. Okay, so far so good. Let's take a sneak peek what we're dealing with. An alien patrol. Ooh. Devoted fanatic, devoted fanatic. Well, these, are, these are the new guys. So a couple of necromancers, devoted fanatics. I told you, it sounds like a, like a psionic cult, right? I told you. All right, so... How about for now, we're just taking the high ground here. We'll go in deeper next turn, but for now, that's good. And we do a little overwatch and a little bit more of an overwatch. So let's see if that extra pack just starts to run into us. Did we just find a rift keep? Wow, what is happening? Okay, so we found the Rift Keeper. Apparently, a couple of uh, codices, uh, codices and uh, the hardcore codices, uh, Venators. I thought they were Vipers, but no, no, no. These were the harder cod uh, codices. Interesting. Uh, Cult of Jiraiya. 
counters with lightning reflexes, which also is quite interesting. And there, there we go, these guys are now just rushing us. <laughs> Straight up reinforcements? Oh yeah, the Rift Keeper. I remember. Okay, we gotta kill the Rift Keeper. This is not going to go well. The Brute is nasty. Oh, thankfully we're not the target of the Psionic Bomb. Thank God. Imagine how bad that would have been. Okay, but we're just being randomly targeted. Again, I love yellow alert uh, for its ability to, to, to simply ignore action economy and we just got hit for no other reason. There is a mutant prime to make it worse. Aura of death. Oh, nice. Look at that. Uh, Master Necromancer immediately reanimated him. Then the, uh, then the uh, Sector tried to reanimate them. Now the Master Necromancer really was quicker and as a result the uh, the Sector like uh, starts to burn him. Bit of a mind, uh, mind game versus mind game. I like it. Psy action on Psy action. Now he's burning. Oh, and there's another pack. The Cult of Jiraiya is going to be shafted so hard all right they're not giving up fanatic uh, starts burning the mutant master necromancer with a shotgun very fitting necromancer with a shotgun Okay. Why exactly are we burning, by the way? Wait, what? Okay, so you're telling me inappropriate Murphy is burning because why exactly? Wow. Okay. Well, let's assess the situation because this year is going to be bad. We got an armored viper. Uh, we got to deal with the rift keeper. Fifty-four hit points and 10 armor holy moly the two venators are bad news as well and i'm not even going to go through the 500 enemies that seem to be here so what we're going to do is we're setting up a base here and we're just going to murder every single one of them one after uh, one after the other okay let's start with that hey okay. so i think we need to deal with that pack, it's quite obvious, but equally so, we need to set up a base. And what better way of doing that uh, than to kill everyone here, deploy turrets and then take it from there. For starters. I think we need to heal an appropriate Murphy. Yes, please. Secondly. As we have Zirkim here. I wonder why can't we see these guys? Hmm. All right, let's go into a flanking position, full cover right here. Mark the snake. Check. Snake down to 10 hit points. 
think I want Implacable to actually get Untouchable and Implacable. That's good. Moving up a little bit more aggressive. sure if an inappropriate Murphy in that half cover position if I like that a lot potentially do not but if we're clustering up too much the Venicors could become dangerous all right collector drone 12 hit points is definitely Killable. Let's see, how could we do that? I want to place a turret as well. Are we using Fanfar? Nah, I think we need it for the Rift Keeper. So let's deal with a timer first. The earlier we can prolong that, the better. Over here would be nice, but also quite exposed. In a sense that it can be exploded and then it just drops down. But it has high ground bonus. On the other hand, if we place it down here, maybe somewhere over here, it would have squad side be able to hit all of these things. You know what? That's not too bad doesn't have high ground but it can give us necessary turns good and that frees up time for others I think we're actually putting Murphy a tiny bit further back with an overwatch of course Getting another turret. That additional turret can maybe take care of the collector drone. Nice hit. Alright, it's down to five hit points, and I know exactly who can finish a target with five hit points. Exactly. From the shadows, my friend. Overwatch for inappropriate Murphy. And let's hope that the Venators are not going to go in our direction. Nice. Bladestorm disorients him, so no rifts. That's fantastic. That could have been a shred. Unfortunately not. Untouchable, baby. Untouchable. Well, now we do have a problem. 
these guys can stun. dealing with the Venators or are we dealing with the Rift Keeper? The age-old question in overpowered packs. I think we're going to deal with the Rift Keeper. It's just making the situation worse. The Venators themselves, they can stun and they suck. But overall it's just 7 damage. The Rift Keeper deals more. Okay, so far we seem to be fine. We got quite a few uh, turns left, that's good. That on the other hand was not optimal. I want the Cult of Jiraiya to live as long as possible. Certainly doesn't help us that these guys are just being chucked down over and over and over. We have a few Cult of Jiraiya members that do have stasis and other abilities, so that's good. Apparently that was a Void Rift or something. Why are you pulling more? Dude, you guys, you guys have your handful and you pull another pack, yeah. Stupid. Master Necromancers try to regulate with their shotguns. Oh no. Oh no. Whenever you get one of those cinematic intros, you know that you're up for something horrible exalted arc bishop Ugh. my age old theory about um, the more names uh, an enemy has the worse it is is true it is so true Okay, we need to reload. Like I said, the Venators are quote-unquote the least of our concerns. Gotta deal with the Rift Keeper first. Shredding him nicely. There's the blue screen round shot. He has a problem now. Gremlin heal, I think. Instead of healing Zirkim, let's give Zirkim an overwatch. Wait, before we do that, yeah, we can hit the Rift Keeper. That's exactly what I wanted to know. But we're shredding Rift Keeper. This is how we do it, down to 30 hit points. Now, what I definitely would want to do is use my only option to disorient uh, these guys, which is unfortunately charging in. I don't know if they do not explode when we're doing that. I don't know, but what I know is we can't just stand here idle and accept getting hit. So the other option is hitting the guy downstairs. That lead to two hits as well. I 
I think the downstairs option is maybe even better. All right, here we go. Not good. That was our one chance to disorient them. Here's the kill. Or sustenance. Yep. Good old sustenance. Now what we can do is we can try again with advanced teamwork. Another 70%. So I only I should have brought a flashbang. That's annoying. Can't really hit them well because the moment that we do they multiply. We only got the tur turrets left, so I suppose what we're going to do is overwatch. Turret moves over here so that we're further spread out. Overwatches as well. We are indeed moving over here. To see a little bit more of what is going on. We do not want to become visible. The problem that I'm seeing is the codex here might go and hit us with a psionic bomb and I cannot let that happen. There is a chance that we immediately kill it. 40%. So let's use Sting. Didn't. So we have just cloned the problem down to 1 HP. But I needed to give it a try. Good. That one was important. Very important. Good. We can't just let them stand here. Interesting. We gotta deal with the Venators next turn. But all things considered, we're not taking that much damage yet. Network is still looking fine ish. The enemies are dealing with the Cult of Jiraiya. that guy reanimating? Undying will, I don't know what that means. That might hit a transmitter, I don't know. I mean, it, th that could have been a good thing. The psionic bomb can destroy transmitters. Wait, what? That Archbishop. I don't want to fight them. 
Ooh. This looks so busted, so over the top. Every single enemy is just ramped up and I'm already seeing 10 additional enemies here. Cult of Dryer seems to have problems. That was at least 14, 15 enemies uh, that I've just seen with the target not visible ability. Okay. Okay. All right. We are in a tough spot. Do we have the actions at least up here? Okay, cool. Well, it's not taking all of your actions. That's that's not too bad. Okay. So, we got to deal with that Venator back there. And with that Venator, we got to deal with all of the Venators. Venator? More like Janitor, right? <laughs> okay. Joke aside, we need to actually kill these guys. Problem is, we're going to take damage either way. The one thing that might work, though, is if we are flash banging them or in that case shield bashing them there we go disoriented yep it is not parting that's great very good not so good is that we're going to take some damage because uh, they are now exploding oh shit i could have saved some damage on zirkum that was wasteful and such missions uh, as we're currently dealing with typically don't have a lot of room for a lot of margin for errors okay we could give Sirkim another attempt now the good news here is Yerkim himself is still fine from an action economy. Reload and let's just get that Venator and hope that it does not explode. Because if it does, then we're in for a really, really bad surprise. That's a good enough chance to hit. I'm just wondering, should we maybe move away with the taxia? Just minimizing that damage, you know? That potential damage, that is. Same goes for Endors. I fear the, uh, these guys will still explode and deal damage and every single point that I do not have to heal. Right, that was the right decision. Continuing to pile on to that other Venator. Gotta be careful here because that spark might jump up and we can't really prevent it from doing that. Which means 
we have to move over. Time to eliminate at least one Codex. Unfortunately, these guys are down to one hit point. Still can't kill them. Selected turret uh, reloads and just overwatches. I think that's the best course of action. And Zirkim regains hit points. Gotta stay ahead of the curve. And let's get that last Venator away. Unfortunately for us, there was no transmitter. Oh, he hit him upstairs. Okay, I, I see how it is. We fight as one. I don't think I have enough firepower to go through all of this. Oh, and now we're being extra screwed. Oh no, I thought it was uh, using its bomb. But I killed the one that had uh, not used its bomb. This codex here had it on cooldown. But that was more a happy accident than an awesome planning from my end. We fight as one. More we fight enemies as one. come. Slowly but surely they are piling in. I think I think we can't make that network separation unless something is happening. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Double move. If that had been spark. Most of the enemies are double moving. Good, we're going over here into full cover. Nice. That worked out well. And I think we should go to here. Again, out of uh, out of the explosion range. Venator down to just a few hit points. Out of curiosity, we could hit these guys. Well, we could hit all of them. The mech still would be a problem, but I think we can leave it for now. Instead, what I want to do is be really action efficient, get some of these guys down, our last explosives, but hitting and killing four of them is worth a double explosive, specifically if it only takes one turn from Salvo. Okay, he's down to 1 HP. Cool. Turret with uh, squad side takes care of the rest. That's good. 
Now here is where the rubber hits the road. Last Venator goes. Hair trigger. Nice. Sirkim, nice. Love it. You know what? Might as well take the shot. Okay, didn't work. Still cool. Good charge in. 99% seems legit. And then just keep the mech busy. I think that's the right play. Need to get uh, Implacable into the front line. And this Codex is an easy reset. Plus, he removes cover, which is great. Position ourselves here, that would be fun. Mech is potentially just moving in and eating the Blade Storm. No one else in range, so I guess that's a legit turn. In terms of healing anyone in dire need, uh, Endorus is still fine. Gotta save that healing for later, I guess. Reload Overwatch. And Zirkim definitely Overwatches. Has a super solid position there. And as our turret, we might want you far enough away so that you and Endors are not in the same square. I think that. We're fine here. And we're actually overwatching. Okay, cool. So far, so good. There is a transmitter here. Apparently, the psionic bomb has not hit it. The sky is burning, which is good. Might die just due to the flames. That is a bad sign. The Perch Archbishop is not what we wanted to fight against. That is bad. Took our untouchable away. Okay, but we're in full cover, which is good. Suppression. Covering fire really doesn't do a lot because we cannot be hit by overboard shots. They are definitely shifting all to the right side because that's where they see implacable. Oh no, they're shooting at me. That is not good. Sparks moving in. And instantly regrets it. Down to five hit points. Killed the turret though. Getting closer and closer. Do we... Can we see... Realistically see something? Turret has... A bad aim. Which is why I wanted to put it on to high ground.
could move to here and kill that package, which I think is realistic. Gives us one more turn. We are under suppression, so there's really not that much we can do. Still, tr I'm just trying to stay in the game at this point. I'm not sure if this is winnable. Shadow does exactly what Shadow's supposed to do. Scouts ahead. Just double checking, is there any position where we could hit that other transmitter? Is there is a transmitter, right? Well, there are a couple of positions, but none uh, that uh, allow us to hit the transmitter. We can, though, do a kill zone and would potentially hit a few people. Just making sure Endorus is fit and hit points is a bit wacky. And Ataxia hands over the 8 protocol for that extra overwood shot to our front line. Because Sirkin will take quite a bit of heat now. We have a better position. We do not. I think we're okay from a positioning. We just can't push in. It is way too dangerous. Sirkim reloads. Overwatches. And look, I'm reloading as well. And how about something along the lines of this? Oh wait, we said all of them are on the other side. Hmm. Well, I... Hmm. Currently, no, I can't see anyone here. So it is realistic that they will be coming in at some point. And it's not like Killzone is a superb, uh, superb cooldown, which we could never get back. Bit of a waste of an overwatch shot. I was hoping he would die due to burning. He did not. We have a second overwatch shot on Zirkim. That one should have hit. That would have been a fantastic overwatch. Because uh, that Warlock, Priest, Super General, he's a nasty target as well. Okay, cool. Uh, another miss. Must say our Overwatch shots are not necessarily on point. That would be another great explosion. Unfortunately for us, we're running out of consumables. And also unfortunately for us, we're running out of time and 
abilities to deal with the aliens. Yeah, we lost the one turret. That sucks. So let's look. Let's try to solve that Advent Exalt uh, Perch Archbishop puzzle first, and we can take the rest a little bit later. I am wondering if we could see the mech somehow. That's only half cover. I'm trying to see if this here would allow us for Haywire Protocol. We just need squad side, but apparently these two rims here are blocking. That is highly unfortunate. I want to deal with the mech, really. If there is a possibility not to. Maybe. I mean, we could shoot that thing. Next turn, we could also just end the turn, uh, timer altogether. Before I do anything with Implacable, there are what it feels like 200 enemies on that side, so we gotta be really, really careful. A safe way of playing this would be to eliminate the Perch Mech and afterwards go for the Bishop, which I think is the right play. And we gotta play good XCOM here. Good. Fantastic. Sirkim is back in the race. Starting to hit him, shred him. That's a good start. That's a very good start. Like it. Might as well take one shot. Missed, but that is okay. And we're going on Overwatch afterwards. Sirkim being our front line. I'll definitely take the aid protocol again. My problem here is that we likely will have a, a major issue with uh, so many enemies pouring in from the side could hide back here try to snipe one get implacable and move back but if my memory serves me well all of these guys were quite full of health On the other hand, what's what's the real alternative? I mean, look, I could go to here and go into Overwatch, right? Might not be the worst idea.
Let's do that. Forty percent. Yeah, too low. Or rather, doing an Overwatch here. There we go. That guy is down to one hit point. Uh, one armor and one hit point would be f uh, would be absolutely fine. All right, Blade Storm. Nicely down to one hit point. Good, Zirkim stands his ground in the front. Wow, 10 uh, points of damage with the shield. I wish ours would hit for 10. Guardian, Guardian, come on. More hit, more shots. Yep, there we go. Come on, keep going. There we go. Specialist Overwatch, the best. The best Overwatch. Specialist Overwatch is the best Overwatch. Oh, really, Bradford? I wouldn't have noticed. Thank you so much for pointing this out. In our dire times of need. Making it just a little bit more difficult. I think Bradford, in a typical military fashion, is leading by applying pressure. He's one of those guys who will always tell you it's looking even worse. Alright, that guy can explode in a second. We need to move away. The question of the day is, how do we get that heavy down? There's another heavy over here. Okay, cool. Well, two heavies. But we first of all need to move a head away. Because now what we're going to do is we can't this. I was hoping for an explosion. Would have actually helped us. Archbishop is still an issue, but so are the dozens of enemies that are over here. Why exactly is the Archbishop taking so little damage? It's just a lot of hit points, I suppose. Could kill the Assassin. Plasma resistance. Oh, plasma resistance minus six. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that plasma resistance was a thing. Shall we just destroy the assassin? Play it safe. I think that would be a decent idea. Killing that heavy bio trooper would also not be too bad. However, he's really a tank and if it's just about damage, 
Well, this is eight points of damage right there. Reload. And let's kill that collector assassin. It was the right call, although it sucked. Yeah, we're taking the 50-50 here. Healing is still okay. I think Ataxia will reload and just overwatch from back here. Definitely an overwatch from inappropriate Murphy. Let's start fan firing and see if we can get him down. Okay, the answer is yes. Fantastic. Thirteen. We need that hundred percent hit. If we can deal maximum damage, then there is a high likelihood that he will die with an uh, f with implacable and that would be helpful or we make any promises here I think we're just going to bite the bullet now That's, that hurts. I was hoping that we wouldn't take any damage. We are behind enemy lines. Besides Banish, we don't have a lot other options. Wow, I didn't know that the guy was there. That was too close for comfort. We would have survived it, but still. All right, so at least that part of the mission is successfully done. Now we just got to stand our ground. Easy peasy, right? Wrong. Ten points of damage, okay, cool. Well, not a hundred percent hit, and you know what they say about not hundred percent hits. If it's not a hundred percent hit, it is a miss. Or potential miss. Actually in XCOM's terms it is a miss. Yeah, we got implacable. The question is, where do we want to implacably position ourselves? Bio Captain, Collector Assassin, and Purifier. We got that Elite Purge unit. So we could take that full cover here, which is only really invadable by the Purge Heavy, and he will need to pass by our position, so it's actually okay. Haha, <laughs> missed. Untouchable? No! There we go. No! At least the untouchable was not wasted.
Okay, all things considered. This mission is actually playing out better than I would have expected. We do have a semi-solid fortress, which we're using for our advantage. We do have enough remaining capabilities to just withstand a bit of the onslaught here. And we have an okay overall position. We're down to five plus a turret. But at least no more timer, which greatly alleviates the pressure. So if we can somehow get that Advent Exalted Perch Archbishop Super General down, then I think we do have a realistic chance of of doing the mission, but yeah. Well, it's still super close. So we got an overwatch here. That's a problem. We need to deal with the captain because that guy is an issue in itself. Purifier is okay. And the exalted archbishop, we need to lure him deeper into our territory. So let's see if we can remove the cover. Well, maybe we don't need to remove the cover. Very good. So we got Implacable. Almost tempted to go here to teach him a lesson, but that's not a good idea, I guess. I need a place where I can withdraw. Optimally one where that stupid arch archbishop is not seeing us. Over here, sort of okay. Problem is, the Archbishop can always, almost always see us. Over here would be decent position as well. But before we even think about positions, we need to take away that Overwatch. Unless we want to stay where we are, we need to take away that overwatch. It's tempting to just hit that bio trooper. Kill him with the sniper. And then remove the overwatch. I think we're going to do that. I hate to let Zirkim still stand in the same spot. That's not good. But this here is a more effective play. We gotta kill as many as possible and the trooper was actually quite a nasty fellow. Okay, well that worked out well. A protocol for Zirkim. And then we're overwatching and Ah, 
How about we're moving to here? How about we're just staying where we are? Could move all the way over here, but that would open us up for all of uh, the newcomers. We have untouchable. Might as well use it. I'm, I'm sort of trying to bait the warlock into attacking implacable because I hope that the untouchable would work. Of course not if he does something. Wow. Wow. So that was four shredding, four damage, fire, and on top of it, four damage, four shredding, fire, and on top of it, um, panic. Talking about a tiny bit over tuned abilities. Just a tiny bit over tuned. <laughs> no way oh and they can act immediately well fantastic well this is great isn't it Getting him back into action. Good, I'm wondering. I think there is a good chance that either of these guys could help us, like a lot. Advent Spark. How difficult is a hack? 35%. Okay. I honestly just need a tank. Someone who is taking the severe beating instead of us. Um, I know that he has micro missiles, so let's try that. Nice, nice, very nice. All right, mainly I also used him because he was kind of in the open. If it would have failed, that would be a good fallback. A lot of hits. Let's try to kill that Codex first. Free reload. And if we were now to take shots, that would be one. Mech would be out. I think I think we can do face off. Might as well kill that purifier. Good, so that removes the overwatch. So far so good. 
Uh, we still got that uh, assassin right there. I mean, inappropriate Murphy has a really good position. Don't want to cluster up with Zirkum. There is that second advent spark, which I think we can hit. And then there is this armored snake. Hmm. I hate the snake, but I hate the spark as well. And I know that we can kill the spark rather easy. Nice. Free, free hair trigger. We'll, we'll wait. Um, Let's go for that Advent Spark. Great. Okay, cool. Tell you what, we're continuing. And trying to hit the others. Maybe better to overwatch. Sirkim definitely gets the aid protocol. And then inappropriate Murphy overwatches. Now we only got two more to go. Hmm. Look, point being is I could go here. What's our damage with the shotgun? That's not 100% to kill. But it is a hundred percent kill against the heavy here. Is it clear? So let's do exactly that. The assassin might choose to shoot up. So I'll just face tank that and let uh, Bladestorm do its magic. And we're going to overwatch here because 35% is not good enough. Damn it. Still I've damage and mind controlled? Are you fucking kidding me? It shows time and time again that you just cannot leave these things alone. Okay, let's... Bombard them. Good. Armored Viper is free to be shot, and we're doing exactly that. Done. That should counter the mind control. Thank you. I would have been surprised and shocked if that would have been not the case. Trying to heal back Zirkim. He's taken a lot of beating this entire encounter. 
And we have one more healing, which I will not use at this point. Trooper, Bishop. Okay, well, I mean, we could uh, kill Zone, which arguably is the best choice here. Could switch sides over here. Move up here. Could move up here. I think we need to move. It's not much. Want to kill that assassin, but it is a dangerous task. Could move a tiny bit back. That's the right play. Not going in too deep, instead, overwatching. could drop down here it's not high ground anymore but we would be very safe and they could calmly push in i th think that's the right call instead of uh, kill zone we can do kill zone next turn if need be one shot just to test the water that's a no-no. And I mean, look. We could move in and hit this guy equally. We can go out of line of sight. Still be in a really good position for an overwatch and let them come. The mech will die. The stupid bishop is just waiting. All right, that was a miss. Fantastic. We have a limited number of enemies to deal with. Moving up, just to get the loot. Hopefully we're getting something. Oh, Superior Expanded Magazine definitely is worth it. Can't really deal with that Archbishop. Now, by the way, is a fantastic point for a kill zone. Tower takes a shot because there is no disadvantage of uh, doing that and takes an overwatch afterwards, will potentially die. We are giving an aid protocol over to Zirkim for a double overwatch.
And then... We know there is an assassin here, but... This here would not allow them to attack us. Okay, Implacable does what he is supposed to do in this situation. Hiding out. Zirkim reloads, overwatches. That guy has a lot of defense. Good, let the others push in. <clears throat> Good. An annoyance. Come on, push in. But they are not charging in. That is lamentable. Only two hits. Uh, two shots. Not uh, zero hits, unfortunately. Trying to get that assassin. Okay, that was a solid hit. I like it. Which in return means... Well, he's in full cover. In return, that means... Are we hitting 406? We are. Hmm. Let's be action efficient here. I want to save run gun and the full ammo clip reloading shield to the face and full cover <clears throat> slightly out of line of sight to pull uh, to reel them in Good, Zirkim with another aid protocol for that double overwatch action. Good, reload for Ataxia and an overwatch. I'm expecting at least one of them to push in. Untouchable baby. I can't move. That was close. Is the guy double moving? No, he's overwatching. Good, so the mutant is at like what? Six to eight hit points. Time for us to clean that up. Thankfully I have safe run and gun. Good, we got implacable and untouchable. And we know there is a guy Literally camping right there. Sure Inappropriate Murphy. Needs to pull his weight here.
free reload and that should be a kill right okay cool since that is a kill let's just double check still trying to retake our high ground here Okay, well, the bishop is up for grabs now, as it seems. Everybody's moving in on him. That's six plasma. And almost impossible to crit uh, is an absolute stupid set up wow fanfire for three points of damage so what's the idea of counterplay here i'm asking myself because a good enemy design in my book is one where you are effectively having a chance for a counterplay here Plasma resistance, like what What exactly is that counterplay? Not using plasma, is, is that the idea? Overwatch. And standing in the open so that I don't give him cover. Late storm. He's disoriented. Of course, he also has scorching touch, which deals fire damage apparently. Look, I'm not complaining about difficulty don't get me wrong i'm the first one who i'm potentially the person who loves difficulty in games more than anyone else but difficulty means that knowledge skill or other parameters allow you to to de facto be better than others What I'm seeing here is that that seems to be not possible. Although he's just taking more damage, I am trying to find out where that is. Still has plasma resistance. So the moment that you shoot him the first time, he gets plasma resistance. Which really just means don't shoot him more than once around. I think that is a stupid design. Specifically, if he has six plasma resistance, like, what the fuck is this? Eight protocol onto implacable. For that extra overwatch shot. Because maybe that stupid resistance goes away on his turn. Who knows? We're standing in the open. Do not give him any excuse. And 100% hit for 3 points of damage. That seems totally legit. Oh no, we crit for 5. I am sorry. <laughs> oh, 50 enemies. And we're not talking about losses here, guys. That was a massive banger of a mission. Lost two towers. Lost the mech. Needed to evac uh, the Reaper. The cult of uh, Jiraiya, or whatever it was called, was immediately dispersed. Like, they were, they were built to withstand a lot of damage, but the show of force, like the size 8 packs, that was hardcore, and I'm not even sure which of the packs I've 
think I hated the most. Riftkeeper 2 plus 2 Venators really was bad, but this Exalted War Priest uh, with its uh, stupid Plasma ability and his, its Hellfire, 4 Shredding, 4 Damage, uh, Fire plus Panic, that was bad as well because he came with 7 enemies. I don't even know what some of the others did. Uh, the Psy Viper with the sword, sword on its back looked like it would uh, come in for melee attacks. I didn't even want to think about having a Viper that has Templar attacks or uh, more other attacks. That would be nasty. Um, poison Spit, Mind Control. Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad as well. So, yeah, all in all, I mean, guys, it. It, this is a uh, near or end game, 50 enemies, and we had the major team, and we had quite a good position, so with a lot of tricks and just massive pos uh, positioning to, to not uh, charge in, we barely made it, and everybody took damage. I mean, uh, we had like one heal left. Look at the amount of damage that we took overall. Armored Psy Viper Corpse. Okay. Stone Age, 3 of 3. Look at that. Uh, we countered uh, the total and utter loss of power. Well, that was quite helpful. Can't really help John here. Zirkim took some serious wounds in the battle. We got some more loot. Ooh, I tell you what, I think I saw some heavy weapons up here, which I would want to take first. That could be a Shredstorm Cannon or a Blaster Launcher, which would actually be an upgrade to what we're having. So let's go with that. And we got a supply drop. Well, look at that. In a Royal Rumble, three of these guys already been rumbled out. So we got Thunder Mountain. That, I think, were the hardcore um, stun lancers and two hidden events that are pretty bad. Would do ammunition instantly. I think we're good. We're good. Sabotage allows us to stay in the game longer. And we got a lot of supplies. So first thing first, if with all of our new supplies, do we have anything to upgrade? Well, we certainly have a lot of items that we can build. Scimitar, yeah, we're missing alloys and... Uh, we don't have enough intel. Okay, Art Archon Autopsy into Plasma Lance so that we get the Sniper upgrades. I think that's what we need to do now. Our have nice, plus eight dodge. Okay, destroy Raiders HQ. Locate uh, Raiders. Oh, okay, okay. So this is the Phantoms, which we have located already. And we want to do that. I promise you guys we're doing that. So it's definitely happening. Then we had that. We could get another Skirmisher. One that would be high level. Data Retrieval, no. Could definitely use additional scientists. Given that there is not a massive plus 10 dodge somewhere. I think we're going to do this here. 
14 days and the raiders will definitely ambush us so one person gets a promotion and i'm wondering uh, if we should use that in order to get implacable the promotion to uh, colonel typically like to use major to colonel promotions because uh, that rank takes so long the other alternative is zirkim but that would need mean we need to wait four days i tell you what we're going to give him the promotion he has decent items Uh, not so much our colonel here. Let's make armor available because I know that we could give him a wrath suit. Okay, not a good weapon, but at least high ground we can use our skirmisher here and wilson just double checking skirmisher has equipment uh, wilson sort of has equipment Let's give him tracer rounds because he's not hitting very well. And some extra hit points wouldn't be bad either. That way he's not going to be one shot. Okay, so that takes all of them out for 14 days. And where the I assume we would raid the base not only with those four but with additional units elsewise this would be a really really poor choice let's just double check something nah it's going to be fine i think it works like the location thing they are being ambushed and then we're helping them and we're going to send the prime team in so that really shouldn't be the biggest problem. Good. And we need to wait for the weapon research as always. We don't... It's actually Archon research into... Um, rifle research into Warlock weapon research. So the new stuff again needs to wait for a while. Out of curiosity, do we have anything? No, we don't have any. No, we don't have any cores here. Nice. Fitzgerald got another, another ability. Slowly but surely our psi, uh, psi operatives are becoming better, so we might be able to take them onto a mission. The Archon Autopsy finally completes, and with that we get a lot of upgrades. Oh no. Oh wow. Okay, well, there are a couple of instant options here can't say no to an instant option so bio nanoscale vest the one that we already have is now available currently we can build that which is great because uh, they were really really good the stun lancers give us uh, the typical uh, second level upgrade which we do no longer need because we now have level three Troop Autopsy 
Gives us battle scanners. Not bad, but we know them already. Good. And this here would be light armor. Mind you, Wrath suits and others are counting as light armor. I cannot not take that. Not in such a difficult mission. I hate it, but we're putting off uh, important research yet again. So, where is that new armor? Not here, which is already good, because it means we don't need... Um, cores for it. Bio assault troopers and 45 corpses. Well, that is an instant build uh, for as many bio uh, trooper corpses as we have. Having four of these bad boys. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll be able to survive after all. So, in terms of upgrade here, I think the axe being upgraded would not be the worst idea. Fusion Blade, Fusion Rip Trick definitely is an option. Uh, we don't need that now. And then we do have that Plasma Scimitar. Uh, we're missing Alois and Elarium to do all of those fun items. And I would love to have some cores to get these Celeted Turrets to MK3. They were really good. The other deployable turret was also pretty good. So I think those will be a stable item from now on. And there is a Shredstorm Cannon. Mm, very good. One of my favorite heavy weapons. Now I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and take assorted loot. That could be anything from ammunition over heavy weapons as well. Or PCSs, weapon modifications. Unfortunately, the Avatar project continues, but we can't really change that now. Shooter is getting all of the important skills as well. Psy operative training is really something that's just happening. Uh, behind the scenes. We got a new uh, soldier right here and I would like to acquire a further ranger. Thank you. Additionally, I think we can finally get parkour. We have the money for it. Might as well do that. 5% chance for free movement after the first move. And we got ourselves Dranks in all of his glory uh he was uh, he is quite active uh, member of the youtube channel and also has helped us in previous runs uh, this time he is going to be a specialist good choice by the way medical protocol yes please revival protocol yes please and standard intellect not enough to yet get another ability okay so anything that by the way that we can upgrade here review upgrades no further upgrades potential here might come in handy I don't like the hyper uh, module a lot, but it could come in handy. We don't need more power yet. Commander, now that we've built the shadow no further upgrade needed anywhere. Silab is already upgraded. Laboratory, I think, is also up. Yeah. Everything's upgraded. Okay, well, plowing along. We have a lot of tech ahead of us, but it is time to Royal Rumble one of the other factions out. Uh, wow, that would uh, help us with Intel, and the scientist wouldn't be bad either. 
But I hate, absolutely hate VIP missions because they can be so deceiving. Perch Sniper, Perch Mac, Drone, Heavy Mac, Perch Elite Python, Collector, Cyborg, Praetorian Sterilizer. Ugh. These guys are nasty. But so is literally every everybody in the campaign now. I tell you what, um, I think I were going to do that. And right afterwards, it's uh, the Bandits HQ. I, if we're looking at, at our available soldiers. I don't want to risk the colonels, so they are definitely not going to join. So this is then potentially going to be a job for the C team. Well, arguably you can, uh, you could let the B team run in. Maybe I'll do that. Um, and let the C team level up uh, on the easier mission because the one that we're going to go for is going to be quite rough. So maybe a Reaper again. We won't have Implacable uh, as he's on a Covert Ops mission getting his promotion, but we will have the rest and that is a really good troop. Could take Lyrical and uh, potentially not Lyrical. Uh, I'll figure something out. We're missing, we're one frontliner short on that mission, but that uh, will be okay. Good. So that actually looks uh, fantastic. If uh, you are interested in a dark VIP rescue, I can tell you where you find the information about that. It's hidden behind uh, the like button. Promise you, if you click it uh, often enough, you will get extra info about the VIP. Little pro trip from my side. See you on the next mission. Bye bye.